Hello everyone. I haven't done a video for a while, there's been a lot going on. So what I thought is that I would show you my new switchboard. Uh, this is a GPO, General Post Office switchboard N1070, which is the successor to the 83796. It's stamped inside 61 oblique 1, suggests. I think it's probably January 1961. As you can see, it is quite large. Uh, stand, floor standing switchboard. Uh, that's my desk. That's a bookcase. Uh, and you can see uh, that it takes up quite a bit of space. What I'm going to do is just a quick video uh, showing you some of the um, features of it and how it works. It is all connected up to my phones in the house here. And here's a bit of a close-up of it. These are the doll's eyes, which give extension calling. It has 10 exchange lines. These are the exchange line callers here, our signals. 10 exchange lines coming in from the outside. I'm running three at the moment. Uh, you'll see that I've, I've just uh, blanked out the numbers uh, and also on the dial, because I don't particularly want any of you ringing me up in the wee small hours just to see what it sounds like to call a 62 year old switchboard is the sort of strange thing I would do so uh, I just presume other people do odd things like that as well you probably don't because you're normal and I'm not these are the extension jacks and the exchange jacks at the bottom the cord jacks here uh, status signals there and the switch is there for operating it. So what I'm going to do is set you up on the stand and then we'll uh, have a look at how this all works. Where were we? As I explained these are the extension doll's eyes when an extension picks up line the one of the doll's eyes drops say it's 13 and it drops down like that and sounds an alarm that was the sound of the alarm uh, I can silence the alarm which when you were operating the switchboard was what one would generally do uh, because it just drives you nuts otherwise so I'm going to do that now so if I'm to pick out I've got two phones here uh, this is extension 1 which lives on this desk, that's extension 3 which lives up at the other end of the room but I've <coughs> brought it over for the purposes of demonstrating what I'm going to demonstrate to you. So if I were to pick up extension 1, you'll see that the doll's eye has now dropped. So to answer that, you see these cord circuits, they run in lines, they are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and they run vertically like so. So everything in one connects together, everything in two connects together. You operate the answer cord at the back, the calling cord at the front. These little things light up. Uh, they're actually little flaps inside rather than lights to show the status of the answer cord and the calling cord, uh, which uh, we will shortly see. The switches here, when you answer a call, you operate the speak key. Just push it back like so. If you need to ring an extension, that should say ring, it actually says dial, which I think is an error. Somebody's up, the ring has obviously dropped out and uh, it's been replaced with just something else which is wrong but it doesn't really matter because I know what it is. Uh, you pull it back like so, those are spring loaded, some better than others. Uh, we'll demonstrate that as well. Uh, you can ring the back cord which is the answer cord, that's if an extension goes down by accident and you just want to recall it and you're already plugged in. And to dial out this switchboard is designed to dial out for the extensions on exchange lines rather than them dialing themselves, although the phones, the later phones do have dials. Originally, when this was designed, extension phones wouldn't have had dials. 
uh, what you do is you push that back and then you can operate the dial. Strangely when you do that you can't hear the dial tone of the line uh, so you have to restore it as soon as you've dialed so that you can pick that up. So what we'll do now, uh, we'll call in from another extension and we'll see if we can put a call through from extension 1 to extension 3. Here's our call come in on extension 1, Doll's Eye has dropped. We're going to pick up the answering cord of circuit 4, just because it's the nearest. Plug in. Doll's Eye cancels. You'll see the answering signal is now there, which shows that's live. We pick up. We're speaking to extension 1 through the headset, which is up here. Extension 1 says, can I speak to extension 3, please? So, we pick up the other cord, that's the calling cord for extension, uh, sorry, on number 4, which is in line with it. We plug into extension 3. Restore the speak key. Pull back, and we can ring extension 3. It's manual ringing. So... You can ring for as long or as short as you like. Uh, you can simulate an exchange ring if you fancy it. If you really want to annoy the person on that extension who think it's an outside call, of course it isn't. So you can do short, long, or just mess around. Once that phone decides it's going to pick up, the switchboard operator knows it's picked up because this calling signal now shows, so they're both showing yellow. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. I'll do a bit of a close-up later on so you can see a bit more. And then, of course, your, your speak key is already restored anyway. So that call is established and will continue to be established until the parties put the phone down. Which, of course, has now just happened. They've gone off. You don't get an audible signal back with this board. Um, it's negative clearing, which means that you have to keep an eye on those. And once they've gone black, you just pull out and everything is then finished off. So that's an extension to extension call. Now, we'll have a look at what happens when an exchange line calls in. So I'm going to call in on my mobile phone. If I can remember how to do it. God, I hate these things. Oh, so much easier just to dial a number. Right, here we go. Home. This is line one. I've got three that come in, but uh, this is the... This is the first one, and I'll show you what happens. There we go. Calls come in, this drops, activates the alarm. I can silence that. It's still ringing. So to answer it, I need to find myself an answering cord. Insert into line one. And there we go, we're answered. That actually goes on hold as soon as you insert the cord. Then we speak here. So you can see call is active there. You can speak on the headset and I'm not going to because I'm talking to myself so it's pointless. So the call is in. Caller asks for, let's say extension 6, that goes into the study which is just through there. So we select the same line of the calling cords at the line, vertical line there. It's number 4. Again, I've just picked that one up again because it's close. Insert into number 6. Restore the speak key back. You'll see that holds, which is demonstrated by this being yellow here, showing that the exchange, which is on the answer cord, is being held. And we ring. Just like that. I'm better if I demonstrate it with extension 1, because it's next to me. So let's do 1. So the operator will do that. 
signal that the call is there, waiting. Extension one will pick up. There we go. Shows the operator to stop ringing because uh, that call is now established. Once that call's then finished, down goes the extension. Those both go out. Operator knows they're all finished. And there we go. We can then just restore <coughs> and remove the plugs. I can do the same with line two. I'll show you line two call coming in. I leave that off because it's really loud, isn't it? Sorry, that's the clock, not the switchboard. You can hear, there we go. You can see that's dropped. It's activated by the AC ring pulse, just dropping this little hook here. And again, we then answer it by selecting an answer cord into line two here. That's gone on to hold. So we can do that if we happen to be on another call and it'll just hold away. Then we're onto the speak key and we are speaking. So again, we can put a call through to an extension. Uh, let's just find one, shall we? Let's say four, that's in the kitchen. Store the speak key. Ring. Go. Kitchen's just the other side of us behind. You'll find there's no answer. Just put the speak key back. We can tell the call there's no answer, take a message, or whatever else we fancy doing. And there we are. Thanks very much. They'll call you back. Goodbye. Unplug. We're back to back to where we were. You restore that back up. Yeah, if you don't restore these, they just stay dropped down and the alarm will be sounding. That's just frightened the cat. Uh, so you just push them back up by hand. It does mean, of course, that when you... Uh, when you leave it, you either need to make sure the alarm is off or that the night service is on. The night service uh, system up here stops any calls coming into the switchboard from the outside lines if you've connected them through to an exchange line, so you just operate that, it works on the first five cores here. Just select one of those, and what you can do is put it through so that the extensions can get a direct outside line at night, as though it was connected directly to it. So we just use this phone, and the switchboard is sort of inactive. Uh, so if I were then to call, I should have, yeah, if I were to then call in from an outside line when we're on night so I've got a call coming in. Do excuse me one moment. That's not me. Hello? To what? Sorry about that. That was a live call, so you saw exactly what happened. It couldn't have been timed better, could it? Uh, so that's what happens when night service is on which we're now going to take off. Because what happens otherwise, if you just plug straight in and leave it, uh, is that the exchange line will hold. It also affects the <coughs> its drawing power then from the switchboard's own power, uh, which runs off a separate unit. Uh, so we don't want to be doing that all the time. So if you put night service on, it takes all the relays off and just connects out straight to the exchange line. So hopefully that's a little bit of a indication for you of how these things work. Uh, I didn't dial out, did I? No, I'll do another video for that perhaps. Uh, if you have any questions, pop a comment in and don't forget to subscribe. I'm doing some more on this at some point and some of the other phones as I connect more of them around the house. I've already got uh, nine extensions here uh, and there's a few more to go in some of the other rooms and uh, in a couple of the outside rooms uh, which we've got here. There's a scullery and there's a boiler house so I'm going to set some more up at some point so that it's all a bit more comprehensive. Although saying that only two of us live here. One thing I didn't show you was the hand generator. You see this switch here uh, we've got power ringing, so it's supplied by an uh, AC ringing. The switchboard runs on DC. It's about uh, supposed to be about 12 volts, but it actually runs on 14 because 
uh, it doesn't seem to operate some of the relays otherwise, so it, it's on slightly more than it probably should be. Um, but ringing uh, supply, which is the same with your outside line at home, uh, comes in via AC because it has to operate the mechanical bell. And AC ringing is about between 55 and 60 volts is what this uh, system currently runs on, uh, which is sufficient to ring the bells, as you can see, and at about 25 hertz. Uh, if you haven't got power ringing fitted, then you just keep this switch here, which is marked hand gen, operated towards the back, and then that utilizes this magneto here, uh, which provides the power supply for the ringing. So say if I want to ring extension um, 2, which is in the hall behind us, we'll plug into 2, and operate this, and it's the same switch, but the power comes from here. So, that's what that does. It's also, you can also be used in the event of a power failure if you've got an exchange line call come in, and it allows you then to put it through. Uh, somewhere else utilizing the power from the exchange line. Anyway folks, hope you've enjoyed that little bit of eccentric oddness. There aren't that many switchboard videos on um, YouTube, I don't think, for private uh, exchanges. Uh, there's quite a few for the old public exchanges. Um, so I hope that's of interest to you. And uh, leave us a comment. Take me months to reply, but uh, I will reply eventually, probably. Uh, and take care folks, cheerio!